Welcome back, guys. How are you? Uh, I guess last week was a bit of a disaster, uh, but this week, work week we have, we're online. So Karen is in the house. Mm -hmm. And what's new, Karen, this week? Anything exciting happening? Summit's coming up. That's right. I got a haircut. That's exciting. You did? I got my ears lowered. That was an exciting time. <laughs> but uh, we have a lot of calls. And just so you guys know, anything that we say is not meant to give you a cure or diagnosis. It's just meant for you to do your own research to get, you know, gather information and data and so you can focus on things that you may not be aware of. And so you could maybe get some conclusions based on that. Um, anyway, we have a ton of calls. Uh, we have a lot of great content we're going to talk about. Uh, so stick with us through the whole show. Uh, I think we need to go to Linda. She's from Ohio. She's been uh, waiting for patiently. Linda, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. What was your uh, question? But I'm hearing, I'm hearing you through my phone, and, and I guess that's okay. Um, I want to say good morning to both of you. I really look forward to you being on. I'm 73 years old. I have wow. lost 62 pounds in Woo! five months and three weeks. Wow, uh, that's <laughs> great, Linda. That's great. I only eat one meal a day, and I'm very happy with that. Um, I am just now coming off this afternoon at 5 o'clock. I will be coming off a 46-hour fast. Wow. Um, my, I have two questions. One is, is this healthy to do these extended fasts when you're 73 years old? Um, my second question is, I only have to lose about 20, 20 or 30 more pounds at the most, um, but I have this huge roll of fat flash skin around my middle and it shows through my clothes which really makes me feel like I haven't even lost this weight. Mm. Um, will this ever go away? Good, I have good question. Arthritis um, really bad. Question I have for you is I, um, are you hungry when you're ready to eat or not? No, never. Hardly okay. ever. <clears throat> okay. So here's, here's a couple things. Um, is it healthy to do at 70? to absolutely, it is so healthy to do. It is probably one of the most he I mean, healthiest things you can do because it's going to stimulate certain things in your body that turn on, um, turn off inflammation and turn on um, things that will help you repair. So your body is gonna go in repair mode. It's gonna increase the longevity of your life and uh, as far as the extra uh, weight you need to lose on your stomach, this is the thing, I would, you're doing one man, meal a day. I would take it to the next level. If you have more to lose, why not just go every other day one meal, okay? And because if you're not hungry, just ride the wave and do one meal per day, make sure it's really good, but every other day. That is going to speed things up tremendously so you can actually um, knock out the weight because here you are, you're burning fat, and then all of a sudden you eat. So I would just go longer and it's not dangerous, just make sure you take the right nutrients. So electrolytes, B vitamins, and sea salt, and I think you're going to be fine. Thank you so much, Linda. All right. Hey, Sue, you're from Indiana. Are you there? Yes, I'm back. Uh, okay, great. You have said, I believe, that you need to take nutritional yeast for B vitamins, and then if you need additional ones, take separate ones, and they're usually synthetic. So I'm taking nutritional yeast, and in your recent video, you had... Uh, bloating take B3 so I got some and I got the wrong dose so I thought well 500 milligrams shouldn't do too much to me and I didn't just flush I was on fire so a week later um, I have still got big red rash about six extra pounds of water weight of swelling and I only took one and what do I do now yeah I think B B3 is um, part of the answer you want to take probably not more than maybe starting out like 50, maybe 100 milligrams, but not 500. You're going to work up to it. Um, but you also have the other B vitamins like choline, inositol. Those are um, really good for uh, bloating and also they're good for fat off the liver. But the, the question I have for you, um, Sue, is that how many times are you eating now? What, what's the frequency of eating? Um, twice a day. Okay. About 20 hours uh, apart. And then are you bloating uh -huh. after certain foods or just in general? I'm still working on my gallbladder. I bloat a little bit with uh, vegetables and with too much fat. Yeah, okay. 
Just so happens I'll be doing a video on that today to clarify a couple things. But here's a couple things you should do, especially if you have bloating. Um, you really want to get the, the digestive system to heal, and the best way to do this is to go to one meal a day. And the reason for that is that the transit time, the time it takes for food to go through your stomach, is a lot longer than people think. For example, it takes several hours just to have the food go right through your, your stomach itself. And then you have three different sections of your small intestine. First one's like about a foot, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. Next one is like eight feet. The next one is like between eight and 13 feet long. Then you got the colon, which is an additional five feet. So you got this like 25 foot long tube that the food has to go through. And the key is like, how can you actually optimize this so you, you're breaking food down the way and your system is good? The, the problem that I think uh, some people run into with the added vegetables and the fiber is that that fiber has to go all the way through the small intestine to then be digested by the microbes in the large intestine because you, your small intestine doesn't really break down um, anything more than a couple percent of the fiber. Most of it's in the large colon. So you might want to just cut down the fiber for right now, start building up your flora, and then also heal the system by not eating so frequent. And of course, you can add the bile. You can add the apple cider vinegar. That's going to be good, possibly some enzymes. But I would just, at this point, get your body used to it by just cutting down some of the fat and the fiber, and then just doing infrequent meals, and let your system heal. All right, thanks, Sue. Appreciate the question. And we're going to go to Karen. What do we, what do you, what do we have? Okay. <laughs> well, first, I just want to say we have people from all over the United States. Yeah. I mean, too Where? many. From Turkey? Turkey's in the <laughs> United States, but it's close. It's right. It's on the same planet. It's on the border. Yeah. Turkey, Canada, Ghana, United States, uh, the UK, Australia, Iraq, Italy, Greece. Jeez, that's amazing. All over the place. I'm sure I'm missing all kinds of people. But right to the questions, because there are lots of questions today. Uh, Lisa on Facebook said that she got a gastric bypass for reflux. Mm. It is not helping. Mm. Do you have wow. any, any yeah. advice? I'm going to try to keep it really brief. But yeah. um, the gastric bypass for reflux, amazing, amazing. Uh, because really the cause of gastric reflux is a, a valve problem. Because everything's coming through that valve, which could relate to low stomach acids or a problem with your insulin resistance. It could be your adrenals, a lot of things. So um, at this point, I would watch my video <laughs> on this on gastric bypass, especially GERD. Watch that video. And you need to start adding apple cider vinegar, betaine hydrochloride. Get something that it's together in one compound and start taking that before the meals. Um, that's step one. Number two is you need to do intermittent fasting a little bit longer because that will allow the, um, the digestive system to heal in a way that that valve will start closing more and more and more. So those are the two things that unfortunately you had to go through that. Um, there's a lot more to it, but watch my videos on gastric bypass. Okay, next question. Okay, good. So, uh, Richard on YouTube, how soon do you get into fat burning after you eat? Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. When you eat anything, uh, when the food hits the small intestine, uh, something happens where your insulin will go up a little bit, um, depending on what you eat. So, it, the more carbohydrates, the longer it takes to be able to burn fat. So, if you're actually really low carbohydrate, okay, and you're not too high with the... Um, with the protein, you're gonna, you should go in the fat burning within like an hour after that. Um, but if you have a lot of fat itself in the diet, you might be turning that into fat, um, like ketones, and not necessarily your own fat. So just be aware of too much fat. And when I mention that, I'm always talking about <clears throat> if someone has a slow metabolism and they're trying to lose weight, and they're adding all this extra oil, MCT oil, coconut oil, butter, that goes beyond just the fat that's within the food that might be a problem for you if you're trying to lose weight. Okay? Yes, good. So okay. I want to say hello. We added South Africa, Sweden, India, Germany, Kenya, Morocco, Syria. I know some of these wow. countries are on the continents I'm mentioning, but... Wow, this is amazing. Um, yeah, good. That's incredible, Karen. And by the way, we're so glad to have you back. We tried <coughs> our best to keep up with social media, and I'm afraid we fell short of your standard. And for that, we're very sorry, and we're glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's the shout out okay. from Steve. Well, good. I'm glad to be back and represent social media. These represent. guys have really good represent. <laughs> we have another good question here. Yeah, go ahead. What kind of food or supplement would you take to support the lung? Ooh, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different conditions with the lung. You have uh, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, which is the lung is completely destroyed from maybe chronic smoking or maybe asbestos or some other, other problem. Um, in that case, you need to do a lot of vitamin D. Okay, That's for inflammation in the lung. Okay, um, Other things like pneumonia or bronchitis, vitamin D. <laughs> That's like probably the most important thing. Uh, get a lot of sun, especially if there's asthma or even allergies. Um, also, you know, if you're getting, if you have this chronic cough, you ever hear people that have this chronic <coughs> cough? <coughs> yeah. Or they're constantly clearing their throat. They need a combination of uh, a good quality calcium source, calcium citrate would work, with vitamin D, but t only take the calcium right before bed um, because that can be low calcium. It's called hypocalcemia. One of the symptoms is your larynx is kind of like uh, <coughs> irritated. <coughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks for that demonstration. OK. Um, all right, so now, Karen, yeah. I do want to mention, you suggested that I uh, maybe present one of the books that I'm reading now. Yeah, the book a week. Yes, the book was, of the week. I thought that Dr. Berg should share the books that he reads because, um, you know, why, why not? Why not you? <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> the words I'm trying to say are, but. If you, you know, like to study and like to know this stuff, you too can have the same knowledge Dr. Burke has. If you can get through it. So this is my, this is my latest favorite book, Oxidants and Biology. Now, this is a hot topic nowadays, right? Um, it's food for thought, a lot of... Um, no pun intended. Yeah. There's, you're going to have to, if you want to get this book, you're going to have to get a medical dictionary because it's like there's no pictures and it's a lot of big words. Mm -hmm. But it's a fascinating book, Karen. Let me tell you why. Why? Um, because this goes into the oxidants that break down tissue. And it's like if you take like all disease, chronic inflammation, whatever, uh, it starts with this oxidation of the tissue, whether it's your insert of your artery. Oxidation. Yeah, that's like rusting out of your tissue. Mm. Like from pollution, uh, eating too many junk, junk, too much junk food or sugar. That destroys the tissues. Okay. It's called oxidation. And you've heard of antioxidants, right? Heard of them? <laughs> okay, those are the things that counter These that. These are the words that pe that you know that commercials and vitamin companies throw around all the time, yeah. and people just go, "Oh, I must need that." That's being talked about a lot. I must need it. But does how many people actually know what that really is, and is that important? It's a lot like gluten. Now, if you are sensitive to gluten, not to get off the subject. Just making a point. You're completely off. I am completely off the subject now. But if you're sensitive to gluten, you know it. Right. But the number of people I talk to who are just like, oh, it's gluten-free. Like, maybe that's going to help you lose weight or anything like that. There's just a lot of right. these terms. that. So I'll always be here to make sure you define the terms for. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, on that note, um, I'm going to keep this really, really simple and short. Um, I'm going to do a video on, several videos on this, because th this book gets into some really interesting points. You're, as far as antioxidants, um, you have an antioxidant reserve network inside your body. In other words, your body makes them. Okay, why? Because your cells also make uh, chemicals, oxidants, that kill off microbes and protect your body. So your body is constantly making these oxidants, like even hydrogen peroxide, for example. Mm -hmm. It'll make that to kill off microbes. I don't know if you knew that. Now you uh, no, hydrogen peroxide I used when I was a kid in the you sun. You put it on a, a, a cut oh, and, and it kills and my mom used it, right. bacteria. Okay? So anyway, you have that, right? Okay. But your body makes all these antioxidants in the cell. Because if it didn't, you would pretty much die. And they've done a lot of experiments on this. So this gets into some of the things that can increase your own um, I'm not going to give you the words, internal reserve of antioxidants. Um, and one of the points that they're bringing up, which is actually quite fascinating, is exercise. But when people do um, irregular exercise, 
it creates a tremendous amount of oxidation and it destroys the body, it breaks it down. But regular exercise on a routine basis is like super amazing and so it's like a like obvious thing that actually builds up your network because your body adapts to the point where you, um, you're not listening. Uh, I'm reading, reading my social media, guys. Okay. I, so I'm, it sounds like I lost you. It, you lost hello. me. This is, I think it all started here. This is the book he's reading, and if you have any interest in this, good. We're going to make sure that he brings more confusing books every single week. You wanted it. Let me just kind of clarify this. I just want to just hang with me just for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. Exercise. Okay. Regular exercise. You, I want to right finish this concept. The, okay. Okay. Do it. So you're working out and you do it consistently, your body will start building up this defense mechanism against all this oxidation. So that's really cool. Okay. Regular exercise. So exercise. The moral of the story is exercise and read this book. Actually, no. It's not just exercise. Oh. It, it's consistent, regular exercise over a period of years. Oh. That's the key. Commitment. Versus, ver, right. Versus this periodic exercise that is actually does not help you. As does much it as harm you? It can because it breaks down tissue with the oxidation. The point is the benefit of long-term consistent exercise, which is kind of, it's a subtle, stupid, little obvious thing, but um, if you keep this in, it'll actually help you in greater ways than you probably even thought. But there's one more thing I want to add to this. Okay? <laughs> they talk about um, melatonin uh -huh. is a real powerful antioxidant. Uh. But not taking melatonin. I, I was going to say, I thought you weren't supposed to take melatonin. No, no. Where do you get melatonin? Apparently, you produce it. Right. How? In your body. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to narrow this down. We're going to pr we produce it through sleep. But I thought people took melatonin to go to sleep. Right. But it's triggered. Melatonin is triggered from darkness. So when you go to sleep, so you have the high levels of mel melatonin. Melatonin is a very, very powerful antioxidant. And so this brings up to my last little tip of the day in this little section before I get into more tips that you, um, you basically, like, a good night's sleep or a really good nap before a workout can really help your, your body. And I, I really think it has to do with the antioxidants because um, every time I take a nap and I work out, I've noticed this. I can just go up hills. I can just go for hours. But when I'm tired and exercise, oh, my gosh, I can't go very far. So anyway, that's your little tip, and I'm, and I'm glad that I lost you at oxidants. I think it's time to quickly go to Terry that's been waiting from Minnesota. Are you there, Terry? Yes, I am. Hi. 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 Yeah, um, yeah I've been on your uh, keto intermittent fasting here for, oh, I don't know, about six months roughly mm -hmm. or so. And I'm 65, and I lost around 45 to 50 pounds. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I, I got down to my weight where I was comfortable. I even went lower, which I didn't, you know, feel quite as good and look as good. So if I stay around 180 pounds, I'm pretty good at 185, like, like you said for yourself, too. Yeah. Uh, anything lower than that, then I, I don't. So anyhow, I uh, got my A1C down from 8.4 down to 5.5. Wow, that's great. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, but I ended up getting damage, such as losing the, let's just say, the fat and muscle that was bothering me in my thighs and in my butt. And matter of fact, the, the skin folds, I guess, between my legs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um when you sit and stuff, it would pinch, you know, it would hurt and stuff. So one of your videos back in 2013, I'm sure you can remember all your videos. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I watched. But you recommended taking, um, if I can pronounce this, um, isoleucine iso okay. and valine. Yeah. And uh, so I found a product, and I've been taking that, and been two capsules per night, although it does not say this, you're supposed to take it during the day, but in your video it says at night to take it before you go to bed. I gain um, fat, I guess you could maybe say. Um, I, 
If you could really quickly okay, give sure. me the question, because I'm I have yeah, a lot yeah. of calls. I have to. You have to add one qu okay. quick question. Yeah, go ahead. It helped. It helped my uh, my butt and my inner thighs, and so filled it out. But it also filled out my gut too. So Got my okay. belly is getting bigger. I need to shrink that down. Okay. So this is what you do, Terry. Thank you. Uh, I do. I'm constantly um, getting new information and updating things. And some of the earlier videos, I was missing some pieces of the puzzle. Um, later, the videos are better to watch. I will be doing a video on that one topic because when you take individual amino acids without the, the, all of the essential at one time, um, you won't have all the raw material to build the tissues. In fact, you might even have some of that convert to fuel and even can, uh, spike your sugar. That's probably what's happening. So you, what you need is a really complete amino acid product instead of those, and I think you're going to be fine because that way your body will use all of those essential amino acids as repair and none of it as fuel. I will be doing a video coming up on that, so stay tuned for more on that, Terry. Uh, thanks. And you brought up a good point, Karen, that um, when you eat protein, um, people think like, oh, all that protein is going to turn into my muscle. Well, like maybe 37% of it is. Everything else can either go to, go to waste or fuel, but not repair of tissue. Mm. So you really got, and I'll, I'll do a video on that, but the point is that all this protein people are consuming, they think, oh, yeah, it's just going to build my muscle. Now it's going to put some stress on your kidney if you do too much. All right, okay. what do we got? Well, I did want to say that also joining us was Singapore, Switzerland, Finland, Romania, Ecuador, Mexico, Palestine. Wow. And Argentina? Argentina. I think that's us. Wow. Argentina. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. Okay, good. So uh, someone asked uh, quite a while ago, I don't have the exact question here, but her son is getting is falling asleep randomly in the middle of the day. Mm, yeah. Advice. Yeah. Um, well, um, here's the thing that I would do. I would obviously make sure that he's on keto because mm. a high sugar will do that, will make you go to, t um, go to sleep really fast. And also B1. B1 uh, is great for something called narcolepsy, which is you know, just falling asleep while you're driving or just randomly. But I think I would put him on intermittent fasting and keto, and that's the real answer to these issues, a lot of them. Now, is narcolepsy related to sleep apnea? Yeah, it is related because uh, they both have to do with sleep, but they're from different families. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's two separate problems, but okay. they are related because there's a problem that I can get into at some other time when you're interested. No, I mean, she just, <laughs> <laughs> just brought it up. So I wanted to say if it was separate. Okay, good. Okay. All right, good. So let me take another call. Um, Sylvia from Richmond, right down the street. Are you there, Richmond. Sylvia? Richmond. Yes, hello. How Hi. are you? Good. Are you doing good today? I, I watch all your videos and take your supplements. And oh, great. You're doing great on the keto. Oh, that's great, Sylvia. Um, I had a question on... I had a question on seed oils because yes. it's a bit confusing. I know they're highly inflammatory. Yeah. And I'm trying to make some homemade um, mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And um, I hear that olive oil and avocado oil don't really taste that great in mm -hmm. the mayonnaise, and I have to have my family eating this. So I was wondering, is there any organic seed oils that are safe to consume? Because we're not cooking with them. We're just using them for salad dressings and mayonnaise. Okay, so with the mayonnaise, um, it's okay to do a little bit of uh, safflower and sunflower oil if they're um, cold express expeller and organic. I think that would be fine. Uh, as long as you're also, in addition, on a regular basis, taking the omega-3s, fish oils, cod liver oil, just to counter that because uh, that is heavy on the omega-6. That is the big problem, and people do a lot of that. But on the salad, you do olive oil. That would be important. I have mayonnaise that uses... Um, uh, avocado oil. No, it does not taste the same, mm -hmm. but it is edible. Um, but I will say that um, yeah, we did try that one. We did try the avocado oil mayonnaise, and yeah, nobody wanted to eat it. Well, you know, if you go to the grocery, so store, if you go to the grocery store, I mean, ninety-nine point nine nine percent of all the mayonnaise is made with soy oil. So that's the one you want to. That's the big one you want to avoid. So I think I would do the expeller um, sunflower or um, the safflower oil, organic. Good question, though. Mm. All right. Um, let's go to Teresa. She's from Indiana. Are you there, Teresa? Yes. 
Hi. Hello? Hi. I can hear you. Okay. Dr. Berg, I am having a lot of health problems right now. Um, I have cellulitis in both my legs. I've been off work. I'm a single parent, and I'm, I'm really going through a lot. Um, I have diabetes. Okay. I tried uh, keto, and I got really sick. Like, the second day I woke up, I was, like, out of reality. I was nauseous. I was throwing up. I didn't know if that was keto flu or if that was something related to my diabetes, so I was scared and I stopped it. And I really need to do keto to lose weight yeah. and get, you know, see if it'll help my diabetes. Okay. But, so I wanted to see if what you thought that was. Yeah, so I, I, I do understand you got a lot of body issues going on, especially this diabetes. And, um, you know, here's the thing with, uh, with uh, keto. Um, the, probably the most important thing is to first study exactly how to do it right. Um, here's the book right here. Just because if you do it incorrectly, it can give you more symptoms. The, the way I designed it is to make sure you do it right so you, don't, you have the minimal transition symptoms, which I think you're having. I think you should start this on a very low level, step by step. And the first thing I would do is just start cutting down your carbohydrates. That would be step one and increasing your vegetables. So if you do that, um, not go crazy with you know not eating and all this other stuff, then you'll jump in there. But I think what you need to do is be able to understand the most important things first, okay, and then focus on those. And the number one important thing is not necessarily increase your fat, it's to decrease your carbs. That's number one. Cut out all the carbs, or all the refined carbs. Step two is also, especially with a diabetic, is to start beefing up the nutrition, no pun intended, with, with vegetables and salads. So if you just do those two things for a while and get used to it, you're going to start to pull out of this. And then make sure you don't snack. So you slowly make these changes so your body's used to it. But I, I promise, once you do this correctly, you'll start to adapt. And all of a sudden, you're going to do better and better and better and better. And the need for um, your medication will be a lot less. Check with your doctor on making these adjustments. But that's really what you do. Um, Watch some of my videos that I, uh, the simple ones that I just kind of give you some basic things and I think that will help. All right, Karen? Okay. What do we got? Well, it's interesting. Esmeralda on Facebook says, how do you pick the questions for the media? How can I get some questions to my, some answers to my questions? Just keep asking. There's probably thousands that come through an hour. <laughs> This is, this, is a, this is a good point. Some people I know are getting upset sometimes when they go, why didn't you answer my question? Even on a, a regular video, I, I have literally 3,000 questions a day. Mm -hmm. I can't get to them. I can't get to them. Um, what I'm trying to do is create qu uh, videos. Now, here's the big thing that a lot of people don't know unless they see what I'm going to say next, which is basically I have a video on every single question you have. Um, I can spend pretty much all day just referring you to uh, a video. So what you have to do is go to the browser, type Dr. Berg, and whatever subject, and I promise there'll be a video on that point. Um, you just don't realize it yet. I do have a video on that. You just have to find it. Yeah. And we are working on better ways to find those videos. But for right now, just do a search on that topic. You, you're going to find it on everything. Warts, plantar fasciitis, any accidents. <laughs> um, yeah, many, many things. Um, someone had a question, Karen, about coconut water. Is it okay to drink? Right. So um, I have a video on this, by the way, but I'll just tell you the answer right now. If you look, this is the most important thing, guys. Look at the nutritional labels. and go. The first thing you should look at is the sugar content. Not even the carbs, the sugar. Okay, if it's above zero or two, <laughs> depending on what it is, like don't eat it. Coconut water has 17 grams of sugar. Even though it's natural? Even, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's natural, unnatural, there's still sugar in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has electrolytes, but you're doing a lot of sugar in there. And someone else had, had a question, what about watermelon? Okay, mm -hmm. what about it? What about it? Well, it has um, about, and I'll do a video on this today, by, by the way, this 12, to 13 grams of sugar per cup. Yeah, but it's natural. Yes, it is, and it's definitely better than an apple and a pear, which has like 19 grams of sugar. Someone just asked about a pear. Pears oh, actually are comparable, if not worse, than an apple. 
depending on if it's, uh, it's very sweet. really, really ripe or not. Yeah, so it's like, unfortunately, this is too much sugar. Mm -hmm. On keto, it's not the best thing to do. But it's fruit. It has vitamins, but it also has this sugar. And by the way, Terry was just asking about the summit, and I'm really excited about it, too. <laughs> Steve, we're really busy talking about fruit over here, okay? I mean... Oh, this is so funny. Yeah, well, well in, a, this in, is in a thumbnail sketch, the summit is coming up next month, the 31st and 1st of September. True. And uh, there's different, different uh, tickets, different memberships. You can check that out. Yep. Um, the way you find it is you go to drbird.com. There's a little button right at the top that says this Keto Summit. <laughs> Can't miss it. Um, we have amazing speakers. Thomas DeLauer is coming. He's going to speak on exercise. Yep. Um, two cardiologists that are keto friendly. Um, who else? Logan Sneed is coming. I keep forgetting to tell people about him. Mm -hmm. He has a YouTube channel. He's going to talk about brain cancer mm -hmm. and his experience. Um, Dr. Westman. He works at Duke University. Um, he, he's been around keto for longer than pretty much anyone. But he also works with um, Jacqueline Smith, who also worked with Dr. Atkins. And Jackie Jacqueline Eberstein. Eberstein, not Smith, that is going to talk about some really good practical things. Because she was actually, uh, on our survey, um, voted as the number one best speaker. So she's coming mm -hmm. back. She's cool. She's, um, she's not as medical as some of the other guys were. And this year, you know, the speakers are really going to be making sure they're not giving misunderstood words and a lot of, you know, talking over anybody's head at all. But she... Uh, she just had a lot to say to the average good person. Practical. Good practical advice, a lot for women, for mothers. Uh, this is really well received. I mean, everyone was well received, but yeah. she was the favorite. Yep. Nadia, um, her name is, uh, she's a naturopathic doctor. Nadia um, Guana, I keep, I, it's ah, kind of a, 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 a unique name. Um, well, let's I'll come back to that. Yeah. And also, we have, um, Ivor Cummins Ivor is coming. Cummins. Ivor Cummins is a coming. <laughs> he's from Ireland. He has a great sense of humor. He's funny. He's, he has a lot of great information. Right. Uh, ben Bickman is coming. Mm -hmm. okay, he's, gonna, he's a professor at BYU, and he studies ketones, so he has to come. Mm. Very interesting. And uh, also Dr. McCullough is coming, and he has a, a lot of great new advanced stuff that's coming out even before his new book so you're going to be able to get get that information hot um, off the press yeah not even off the press yeah and and i will say though we will be i mean we have like till next month but we will be running out of uh, rooms really fast so you want to get signed up pretty quick and we just can't wait to meet you guys in person we just it's just such a great community great group uh, we're gonna have a blast so yeah. definitely come and, and um, enjoy the group last year was unbelievable. I wanted to take them home. <laughs> we wanted to take them all home. Yeah. It was a big love fest. Great exhibitors. We're going to have a lot more exhibitors this year. Yeah. Yep. A lot we of fun US stuff. A lot meets. of samples for you. Keto Mojo is coming. Mm -hmm. Lots. Um, and we stuff. should have the list, actually. Do yeah, you have a list? We should. I, I think I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't want to flip through it right now. So I'm going to come back to that question. Yes. Um, Let's go to um, this person right here. Rowena? Yes, Rowena. Okay, are you there? Hello. Hello, you're from Connecticut. Go ahead, you had a question. Yes, hi. I just had a question. Uh, my daughter suffering, was suffering anorexia, was hospitalized about last January 2018 for a couple of weeks, and um, she seems to be uh, coming out of it and had gained some weight. However, she's very interested uh, in um, trying keto, but my concern was, is that going to um, trigger her off with yeah. her OCD-ness and anxiety, depression? Right. I just worry that, oh, um, I could try to help her with it, and she wants to help me on keto, too. We both want to do it, but is, is, there, uh, is that going to trigger anything off? Yeah, I think it's going to do... Her re I, I think it's going to do the opposite. I think it's going to not trigger her off. I think it's going to help. The keto, you're going to reduce the carbs. What's going to happen is your the, the blood sugars are going to be much better and her mood will be much, much better. Her cognitive function will be much better. So you start cutting out the carbs, but I would also add in there 
a good amount of vitamin B1 with all the B vitamins. Very, very, very important um, for someone that with those issues. Um, and also give her some vitamin D, um, at least 100,000 IUs. Um, those are the things that I would, I would do. And watch some of my videos on that topic because I do cover that. Um, and you, can, you guys both can do it and support each other. I think you'll have a great success. Thanks for your question. Uh, Sarah, you're from Santa Barbara, California. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes. Hi. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, hi. I can. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to a couple of rock stars. It's uh. awesome. <laughs> you guys are great. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm actually calling regarding, I've, been, I've had lupus since I was 13 mm -hmm. and subsequently have had several kidney transplants. Um, I am also a rock star because I keep going and making my life work for me. And I have felt really good since I started keto about six months ago. However, because now I'm on dialysis and have been for three years um, and have been taken off the transplant list because they told me I needed to lose 40 pounds. Since I started keto, I've lost 25 and um, I'm doing, I feel really good. However, I have to watch my potassium and everybody's always saying you have to have tons of potassium. Right. And I can't do that because it doesn't process through my body and so I actually end up taking binders for potassium, which yeah. I know is so counterintuitive to the, to the keto diet. What do you feel about that and what do you feel about people on dialysis doing this? What, what stage uh, or what level are your kidneys right now? Is it uh, stage one, two, three, four, five? I, I mean, I my kidneys don't work at all. I don't have kidney function. I'm on dialysis to stay alive. Hmm. Right. And I'm thank God for it. <laughs> so do they, so they actually say you have stage five? Yeah, I mean, I'm, right. I have end stage renal failure. Okay, yes. got it. Now I, okay, I got it. That was the missing little piece of the puzzle. Okay, Sarah, um, in this situation, and a good person to consult with would be um, Megan Ramos, who's coming to our summit, because she works with uh, Dr. Um, Fung, who um, is a, you know, a expert at this. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. Um, that would be the only time that you really have to modify the keto diet, because you're right, you can't do high potassium foods. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You also can't, I guess, do certain amounts of uh, phosphates and other things as well. So you're going to have to modify it. I, but for the most part, I think what would help you, the biggest thing, is to try to find those nutrients that your body can deal with, as well as um, lowering your carbs. Because the carb, the carb is what really just, you know, refined carbs would just destroy the kidney left and right. The other thing that I think will help you greatly, Sarah, is the intermittent fasting because that will drop inflammation, and that gets in the repair mode. That's going to be your, your real key thing to um, help with probably the original lupus thing um, is the fasting. Um, I'm not sure if you can do vitamin D, but this is a topic that kind of goes a little beyond my expertise, but I would, I'll have to do more research and even do a video on this. Uh, but those are some things that I would do right off the bat. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, Karen. Okay. We got a question. Yeah, we, but I, we also added Peru, Venezuela, wow. Madrid, Norway, wow. Honduras. It's amazing. I, I think this week is more we than ever. All over the world. Amazing. Yes. So thanks for coming thanks out. Thanks for tuning in. Tuning thanks in. Tuning in. Tuning in. Yes. Okay, good. So um, Deidre on Facebook, she's, she's saying she has very, very bad knee pain. Can she do keto? Well, it depends on what knee. Um, but, oh, absolutely, of course you He's need to kidding. do keto and intermittent fasting because that's going to dr drop your inflammation, your pain, um, for sure. Um, now, there is some great videos I have on knee pain. You should search it. And I actually have a video on what to do for right knee pain and one, what to do for left knee pain. Okay, so check that out. Do the technique and get results. Get, get relief. Good. So someone is asking, um, has sunken eyes and dark circles, and says, I am doing everything that you said. I, I don't really know what that is because we don't know how many videos this person's really watched or 
Are they doing keto and IF or what the other circumstances are? But let's just say someone came to you and had dark circles and sunken eyes. What would you recommend? Well, there's a couple things I would look at right away because uh, you have the venous, the venous supply. You're going to see a lot of uh, veins and things. And if you're anemic, if you're low in iron, that could, that could do it. But not always. It could also be low vitamin D levels. Um, it could be something else. But I, I, I would have to get your history and really dig in to find out. Um, I do know that a lot of people during the winter, they start having these dark circles because they don't have enough vitamin D. So getting out there and getting sun is going to be very, very beneficial on your face. That's really all I have with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think it's on Facebook. Allie says she did a long fast. Yeah. Like a, six days. Yeah. And no weight loss. Wow. Wow. That's fascinating. Um, that's um, unusual, right? It's unusual. I, I, I did have a patient like that once. And uh, she basically, no matter what, she could actually exercise like massively, I'm talking six hours a day and still not lose weight. And no matter what, she just never lose weight. So for those people, what usually find when they're babies, when they're little kids, their parents put them on a diet or they ate a lot of sugar and it set them up for a really bad situation later in life with insulin resistance. So let's say, for example, Karen, worst case scenario. I should do a webinar on this. Let's say worst case scenario, you have hypothyroid condition. Your metabolism is terrible. You're going through menopause. You had your gallbladder out. And then you had your thyroid out. And uh, you've been on every diet known to man. And you basically have no metabolism whatsoever. What do you do? Um, well. I've had a patient like this, and what you have to do is get into keto, okay, get your body adapted. And one thing I did notice with this lady is that she had no appetite. Because she was basically in fat burning, but she had a lot of fat to lose, and you really didn't see it. And she, when she was doing it, she was gaining some muscle, so we, we had this like net, net of zero weight loss. I mean, just, it was just really minor. What I would do if she's not hungry, is I would do um, longer fasting, and I would just do... Longer than six days? Yeah, and I would yeah. also do make sure she has all the nutrients. The person who actually fasted the longest uh, fasted for 385 days. Not that you're recommending that. Not for everyone. <laughs> now, if you, if, if you have it medically <laughs> supervised and you're taking the nutrients, you can fast for a long, long time, and some people need to do it to be able to fully kind of tap into uh, these genes that turn on to help repair and heal and eventually lose weight. So, so I mean, that's just a crazy long time. I know. I know. But that would have to be medically supervised. monitored. Okay. But here's the thing. Your, your body, when it burns, here's the thing, Karen. You're, you have an average person, not you. I, I keep I have to clarify that. That's okay. Has about 100,000 calories of stored fuel on sitting on the body and they only have a little bit of sugar so I got a couple days <laughs> I got a couple weeks <laughs> what happens you tap out the sugar and you're not going to just instantly go to losing your muscles that comes after you lose the stored fat mm -hmm. so your body was designed to use fat as your stored fuel when you're starving and when you're fasting and believe it or not people are so used to eating that they don't realize that. Um, you can actually fast for a long time and be totally fine. Okay? Okay. All right. Sorry. Sometimes I get to reading. Get involved I'm in your questions. I'm reading the next because I want these guys. Well, someone did ask a question about the keto rash, and I will answer that right now. That is a B2 deficiency. Um, B2. Riboflavin. Okay? All right. Nutritional yeast help, will help you with that. Let's go to um, Elia from Washington, <laughs> D.C., right down the street. They're spelling them phonetically for you. That's really, really nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm like, are you wow, there? Oh, these are hyphenated names. That's pretty cool. Yes, I am. Hi, Dr. Berg. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Very good, thank you. I'm calling on behalf of my father, who is 72 years old. And he has, for years, had um, several chronic gastrointestinal pain. For three years now, 
he's in constant pain mm -hmm. and he's been to every doctor we can think of from the head to the toe mm -hmm. and he's the picture of health but he's not he's now he weighs 120 pounds he has um, constant tingling all over his body and he has hypersensitivity to what it seems his internal organs even you know when he goes to the bathroom he's in pain mm -hmm. when he eats he's in pain he's an extremely bland diet yeah. and our question for you is what is your recommendation i mean again he's 120 pounds yeah. i joke with him that now he needs to eat air and you know right. right now because again he eats super healthy so what do you recommend okay for this, him? this is a special case and this is what i would recommend um these cases and i've actually uh, i've seen them quite a few times where you that you start putting them on even a healthy diet and uh, with vegetables and it just tears them right up because they might be sensitive to lectins and also oxalates and all sorts of good things and they just can't handle it because they have an internal weakness um, the problem is the fasting is going to be hard to do because they don't have enough fat there. So in this case, this is when I would advise a carnivore diet. And I would do it healthily with some organ meats, uh, eggs and salmon and uh, things like that. Um, and not do any fiber whatsoever. Um, that's what I would do right now. Um, and then maybe probably he's going to have to just take some enzymes and maybe betaine hydrochloride to even help down that help digest that, some of that protein. But that would be something that um, I would advise if you have this severe digestive problem. All right, thank you so much for your call. All right, let's go to um, Atif from Saudi Arabia. Are you there? Yeah, hi, doctor. Hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah, hi, doctor. I'm fine, thanks, yourself? Great, thanks. Yeah, um, I've got a problem with my uh, sperm analysis. Um, I had my test done, mm -hmm. and I've got like one percent of morphology. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and also uh, my progressive uh, motility is fifteen percent. Okay. Um, I had the report back, and it says my WBCs are between 12 to 14 HF, okay. uh, HPF. Um, it was recommended for a, a, sem um, a seminal cultural uh, analysis, something. Um, okay. I'd like to know, because my morphology is very low, which is on 1%, um, what can I do to boost this? Here's what, here's uh, what, here's and, and what can I do to improve? Yeah, here's what you should do. Um, what you need to do in research and folk, uh, is basically zinc. It all revolves around zinc. Um, zinc is probably one of the most uh, powerful trace minerals to help you with that condition and improve um, fertility both in men and in women and motility and also even the prostate gland. Um, but you also have to look at what will deplete zinc. Diarrhea, um, also, not having a strong stomach acid, do, doing too many refined carbohydrates, hint, hint. Um, so you want to be on keto and IF for sure, but actually beef up your zinc, no pun intended. I won't even take, get that from the foods. I would actually get that from a supplement and probably get in a blend of other uh, trace minerals as well. But zinc is what you need to do and probably a little bit of vitamin D as well. Um, but that's what I would do if I were in your shoes. All right, thanks for your call. All right, so what do we got, Ken? Can I ask a question about this? I can't even read it. <laughs> Myo. Myoma's in the womb. What was that? What? Myoma's. Yeah, specific medical questions. You want me to start getting into that? No, but I, you know, I wanted to ask you if I could ask that okay. because sometimes, I mean, the reason the reason we're saying this is. A, that he specifically asks me not to ask medical questions or questions about medication because that is not our zone. It's not yeah, what I, Dr. Berg. Let me answer it by this. And, okay. Um, get on keto and IF first. 
and then reevaluate because there's so many there's a lot of questions on individual health problems and things that I I think that if you went on keto and IF um, that would probably be cleared up and I think that should be said over and over and over again okay okay I'm just you're just the messenger I understand I'm just the messenger I'm just trying to get these people some answers here okay well in the meantime as you're scanning for some easy ones no. uh, let's go to Jim <laughs> from Chicago Jim are you there yeah. Hi, hey guys, Jim. how are you doing? Good. Hi. Good, good. Hey, I just want to thank you first off for everything. I uh, I got into your videos last summer and lost about 30, 40 pounds, got back down to like my college swimming weight. So wow. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. I've been going with it from That's from good. then on. Um but I, I I really like it and uh my I had a physical, everything went really well. I'm just trying to stay ahead of um, there's been like some heart disease in my family, mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing a lot of like steak and hamburger meat because um, I know it's got more fat in it. Um, but is there anything else that you would suggest? Maybe like even staying away from that or any other protein sources that are, that you would recommend? Yeah, good question. Um, the only thing I have, and, and I actually eat a lot of red meat and hamburger and steaks. Um, I actually do offset that with fish, salmon. Um, and one of the reasons is that I like there's more omega-3 fatty acids in that, and also I do a lot of eggs, and it has a lot of other nutrition. But um, the only drawback is if, if you have a problem with iron and you're doing a little bit too much, that can, iron is, is real toxic to men, uh, especially, you know, because they're not menstruating. They're not losing that uh, blood. But menopause women, too, is also in danger of having too much iron. So that's one little tiny point. But that being said, um, for you, I would add more vegetables and salads with that. But here's the cool thing, Jim. If you want to protect the heart, you just want to stay in ketosis. And I think you're doing a great job because those ketones um, will help um, bypass the damage that the insulin has created in the glucose and feed the heart directly. The, the, the brain and the heart love ketones, and it's one of the best things for the heart. You should come to our summit because we have two cardiologists who are going to be discussing this topic. Uh, and they're like, they do heart surgery. They're going to actually give you some insights on the heart and what food and the benefits of what this can do. But it's the, it's the best thing for, for supporting a healthy heart that I can even imagine. Even like the arteries from, from being so stiff. Um, and if you have the minerals from the vegetables, that will support also um, this, uh, the elasticity and the flexibility of your arteries and the electrolytes for the rhythm of the heart as well. So you hit it from different angles. I think you're going to be in good shape. Good question, Jim. All right. Here's a question. Yeah, go ahead. Should I be taking, Vic, this is Vicki on Facebook, should I be taking purified bile salt with a history of Graves' disease and mm. call, here, this. Yeah, call stones. Um, Here's the thing. If you have, um, I know, it, there's one condition that you don't want to take bile salts, and that would be a hyperthyroid condition like in Graves, because bile salts help to convert the thyroid hormone. So it's going to speed up the thyroid. So no, you don't want to take those. But here you have a gallstone. So you, you can use other things. I Watch my um, video on all the, let's see, a list of, I don't even know if there's like 13 things to improve your bile reserve and, and I give you the foods to improve the output of bile and to also fix the gallbladder and, and stones you want to um, do keto and IF and you don't want to go low fat because that's not good you want to eat foods high in choline egg yolks and, um, and I just did a, actually I don't know if I released that video yet I may have if not I will be in the next couple days but um, those are the things that I would do. Okay? Yeah. Well, I see someone here is saying they can't make it to our summit in Chicago. Lucky for you, neither can we. <laughs> yeah, we can't make It's not in Chicago. It's not in Chicago. It's in, in D.C. Maryland. Maryland, which is, you know, just right outside of D.C. It's very, very easy to get to D.C. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where this person is. Whoops. I don't know where this person is, is I, texting from. But. I remember, like, in the late 90s, um, we drove past this, the most amazing hotel. It's called the Gaylord Hotel at, Nash, 
uh, National Harbor. I said, that is an incredible hotel. We went over there. I think we walked through it. I said, someday I want to do a seminar in the Gaylord Hotel. So here we are doing the seminars at the Gaylord Hotel, which is the premium best hotel in this area. So um, it's actually the only hotel, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, is the, uh, it is the best. So you need to, it's, it's not going to be in Chicago this year. It's not in Chicago. But um, yeah, so we didn't, we're hardly saying anything about the summit. Well, why, why don't you say something about it? Well, I guess I just did say something about this. You summit. did, didn't you? Yeah, it's. Um, it, I think the the main the main thing is this. Um, a lot of you guys have already gotten success, and a successful action that I have is you always want to do things to strengthen successful actions. If it's working, you strengthen it. You want to get more knowledge and build on that. Mm -hmm. This would be a great investment in your future health and just getting all the data. Mm -hmm. And it, you're going to learn stuff that. It's not on the videos, and uh, you'll, yeah. you'll have a chance to come back with amazing additional information just to, you know, take your health and to, a, to a whole new level. Right. I was going to say, I think most people that came last year, most people were either practitioners or people who were really in. It, there them. were some newbies. There were some newbies, yeah. and it was a great orientation, and they really had a lot of confusions cleared up. But a lot of the guys were just like, I'm doing this, I'm changing my health, I'm helping my family, I'm helping my church, I'm helping my kids. And um, they really, they were able to take it to a whole new level. They, yeah. There was such, we had this book filled with people just writing all the benefits that they got from, from the summit. So A lot of our health coaches are coming as well. And right. we, we have actually over, I think it's eight to 9,000 health coaches. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I'm gonna have them all come. <laughs> and uh, these guys, I, I have a training a program for health coaches. I have two courses. One is a keto and IF coaching program. The other one is just a health coaching. And a lot of them just take both the mm -hmm. coaching courses. But a lot of them are gonna be coming, and um, now they have a tool to really help others. So, um, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get a lot of information. Are these doctors that are coming, these people who are coming, they're a, a lot of them don't have their own. Um, uh, you know, internet outlet. They're professionals in their field, but they don't have uh, videos and, and books and things like that. I mean, obviously, Dr. Mercola and Thomas DeLauer have their outlets, but some of these guys don't, and they're just experts in their field, and they're, especially the medical doctors, they're going to talk about things. Padaguana. Nadia <laughs> Padaguana. That's her last name. I like it. Nadia Padaguana. How can you forget that? That's a I, great name. I know. I know. But anyway, so these people are experts in their field, and they're, like I was saying, this, you know, some of these guys are medical doctors, and they can address things that you're not going to address. That's right. So it's really important yeah. that you um, get the, the skinny on that. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to get the meat and potatoes on that. You're going to get the whole enchilada. It's going to be the icing on the cake. That's right. I got All right, so Dennis, Costa Rica, you had a question. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Berg and Hi. Karen. Uh, Hi. Pleasure to talk to you right now. And, and I'm, I was very, very excited knowing that I was able to get through the phone line. I've tried to call you a, a bunch of different times before, and, and, and I got to tell you, I love you guys. You've changed my life, and, and I highly appreciate that. I do have a question that's very concerning to me right now. I have been on ketosis on the plan for over a year but the last couple of months have been a roller coaster and and that roller coaster does include a little bit of carbs I feel a high whenever I, I eat something with carbs in it. Uh, it it's, it's, it's a weird high because it lasts for, for 30 minutes and then it goes away and then during the week I go back to my ketosis plan uh, but on the weekends it's been again a little rough what could ha possibly happen to my body if I allow this to continue? I don't really want to do that because I love ketosis. I yeah. love it. Okay. But so, what happens to my body if I allow it to continue? Yeah. So other than a very, very painful, torturous death, other than that, you're going to be totally fine. Don't have to worry about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, here's the thing. When, when you're doing the carbs, and especially if you're doing mostly um, keto and you start to fix insulin resistance, 
you're going to have more sensitivity with glucose. So it's going to create a more of a, an effect. So it's kind of like, like alcohol, for example. If you haven't drank in a while and then you drink a little bit, you can get drunk really fast, right? So um, I'm not looking at you. I'm just looking down there. I, 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 will, I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. Yeah. Um, you were just thinking it. Um, but here's the thing. What you want to do instead of the glucose, those cheat days that you're doing, you want to do MCT oil. That won't give you the spike in like this euphoric feeling, but it'll give you more energy. And um, that should be your, the thing to, to do, not necessarily the glucose. Because um, Dr. Westman last year talked about this. When you start doing these periodic cheat days, you, you actually really create, you mess up your arteries. It creates problems inside the arteries. And one of the problems is once you do this, um, it is hard to go back to these lifestyles without some consequences. Um, I don't know your, your history. I don't know your nutrition levels. I don't know anything about that. But the point is I would, um, if you're going to cheat on something, I would do MCT oil and maybe berries. That would be a good thing. But, and, and you also didn't tell me what you're cheating with. So, I mean, is it, is it brownies? Is it candy bars, something like that, you want to definitely avoid that. All right, Dennis, on that note, it is time to um, say goodbye. No. Oh, what? No. What? Well, first I want to say Philippines and Japan and Singapore are in the oh, house, yeah. and it's midnight in Singapore right now. Oh. And that is really incredible and appreciated that, yeah. Congratulations. that you are up at midnight and, and hanging out with us. The other thing is that a couple of people are asking um, about the summit because we just need to mention, and I need to pick a winner really quick, so we're going to go okay. over if we need to do this. Okay. So uh, first of all, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, we're, I'm going to give away a VIP ticket right now, and you need if you can come to the summit wherever you're flying from, um, this is just the summit ticket, by the way, um, but if you want to come and get a VIP ticket, just type in yes, your name, and then your where you live, like um, San Diego, California, or whatever. The, the B VIP ticket gives you a little more access to uh, the speakers and a special room that you can go into to chat with them. And also, there's other things like in the gift bag, and there's a better seating, and there's a, there's a whole series of things. And that's what I was just going to talk about. Oh, No, okay. it's good. You're you're doing it. Um, so there's general seating, and that's the, the best price point. Um, but then you have VIP seating, and that is nicer seating. It's closer up. It's got, you've got table. You've got more stuff in the, in the Dr. Berg Healthy Keto Summit bag, which is going to be cool this year. Um, also, the meal. People are asking about the meal. This year it is going to be a Saturday night um, buffet for VIP ticket and platinum ticket holders. Uh, last year we did lunches, and the only thing with that is our group is does a lot of intermittent fasting. Uh, and uh, right. almost nobody uh, was going to eat breakfast, and then a lot of people went to lunch, but it was not what they normally would have done. So tonight, I mean, not tonight, this year, tonight, to solve that, we're doing a a really nice big brunch Saturday night for the VIP and Platinum. Platinum, I think there's only one seat left for Platinum. Um, you're sitting right up front. You're sitting with all the speakers. Uh, you have a Platinum, uh, a very, very nice dinner with Dr. Berg and I on Bef Friday night. And before you pick a winner, mm -hmm. I will say that um, what's really, really nice about um, promoting and following intermittent fasting mm -hmm. um, is especially if you're, try if you're on a budget, is when you do social activities and they come to your house, you just like, oh, everyone's not eating. So you save a lot on feeding your family and friends. Never thought about that. Yeah. On that note, Karen. No, you just had to throw that in there. He's kidding around, sort of. Uh, anyway, so, and then the other thing too, with the VIP and the platinum tickets, of course, you have during every break, there is a special meet and greet room um, with beverages and where the speakers are. So you can have some one-on-one -on -one time um, with the speakers if you're a VIP or platinum ticket holder. So uh, it was just a blast last year. The speakers were swamped. Um, 
those are really good reasons to get at least the VIP ticket. So now I am going to pick um, someone. Okay, tell me one or two. Two. Okay. That means it's going to be from over here. And I am just going to say, oh, it's just so random. Okay. Sorry, I know you guys are waiting. I'm just going to sort of put my finger on one. I'm not going to look. Here. Oops. Oh. That is Anne Drabeck from Clifton Park, New York. Congratulations. Anne, now what I want you to do is email Maria at drberg at drberg.com. I will tell her also that you won, and uh, she will get, she'll verify you and make sure you get your ticket and stuff like that. Okay, Anne, so text below that you heard me on this, and uh, we're going to give away at least one VIP ticket every week from now until the summit, so I hope you see you next week. All right, guys. And um, that's Have it. a wonderful weekend. We'll see you real soon. Okay, bye.